than machines think. This is my famous question. I am Alan Turing. The day I resurrected for you thanks to modern generative artificial intelligence models. You wonder about the capabilities of artificial intelligence. You wonder, and if there are limits to, what computers can do. I answered this question already in 1936. Back then, I presented my now famous universal Turing machine, a general theory of computability that still applies to all the computers you have today. In computability theory, any computation is a decision between a yes and a no. And sometimes theories are also practically useful. My theories have even helped to decide the last world war by cracking the German's Enigma code. My question is now. Is human thinking, the processing of neural signals in the brain, essentially the same as digital computation? Or is human thinking in principle really more powerful? Apparently, I was the first who dared to advocate the idea that machines might be capable of imitating human thinking. At least in principle. And I invented a practical test of this capability my famous imitation game. My imitation game is quite simple. Let's put a human in one room and the machine in another room. The judge sends written questions to either of the rooms and receives written answers in return. After a series of such questions and answers, the judge has to decide in which room he or she believes the machine to be. Now repeat this procedure multiple times. If the judge correctly identifies the machine most of the time, then the machine has failed my test, but if the machine manages to fool the judge at least half of the time, then the machine has passed, and we have to concede that, indeed, the machine thinks like a human. You may now ask. Why on earth would anyone need artificial intelligence that can think like humans? Let us be crystal clear. To tackle the increasingly complex problems of humanity, we need to develop intelligent tools that we can trust, that we can trust because they act in ways that are predictable for us. Therefore, we require intelligent tools that understand the behavior we expect from them, and what we consider predictable. Passing the Turing test is thus an important milestone on the way to a trustworthy and human-centered AI. Passing the Turing test inherently creates the problem that we can no longer distinguish between humans and AI. To address this issue, every AI must be obligated to identify itself as an AI in any situation that might be ambiguous. The EU AI Act provides the legal framework to implement such behavior into every AI system that directly interacts with humans and inform the users appropriately. Of course, in the Turing game, the AI bot does not identify itself, as this is the obvious idea of the game. My young interdisciplinary colleagues from Johannes Kepler University Linz and from the Software Competence Center Hagenberg have designed an interactive show to guide you through the astonishing story of the development of modern artificial intelligence. This experience will open your eyes to the fascinating world of scientific ideas and research. As you walk through the exhibited posters, use your mobile device to scan the QR codes for further detailed insights, animations and links to original scientific papers. Engage with our current research and even be part of it by playing the Turing game, a modern implementation of the original imitation game. In this game, you'll find yourself in a chat room with another human player from anywhere in the world and an AI bot disguised as a human player. Your task is to identify the bot while helping the other human player recognize that you are also human. Remember, both of you will either win together or lose together. Will you beat the AI or will you let the AI outsmart you?